Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Um, how are you doing? I know you've, uh, this is uh, End Times uh, Friday. Uh, you headed at, actually, uh, this is airing right before Christmas, so we're taping. Yeah, December 23rd, I think. A little right? bit ahead of that, but uh, uh, we're uh, hoping everybody has a great Christmas. We'll have, we will have a short devotional on uh, Christmas uh, 26th, uh, Christmas on a Sunday this year. Um, so mm-hmm. obviously we don't broadcast that, and uh, but Monday we will, and wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. So if you're listening to this, we pray that you'll uh, enjoy the weekend and uh, have a great yes. uh, experience with your family and rest and, and celebration of the birth of Christ uh, mm-hmm. and the beauty of that. And uh, as we were, um, <laughs> it was kind of a funny question uh, that came up, uh, Linda uh, you know, we've been, you know, processing, you know, Michelle's passing, and uh, we actually, uh, she took some poinsettias out to her grave, uh, mm. you know, and just, uh, which, you know, we know that that, the person's in heaven, so it's really more for us <laughs> than it is right. for anything else, but um, we were driving back, and Linda, <laughs> Linda had an interesting question, and said, do you think they celebrate Christmas in heaven? Uh, and it was, uh, uh, you know, is a, it was a question and I, I prayed and the answer was, yeah, was yes. Uh, because if you think of all of life, mm-hmm. uh, of God's purpose all the way from Genesis, it was geared toward that moment mm-hmm. of, of Christ's birth. And there was. Remember, uh, during the uh, uh, description of it, and this is particularly in Luke, some in Matthew about the wise men, but um, that the heavenly host rejoiced right. uh, and spoke, and then they, uh, they sang, and then the shepherds heard it re- and, and understood it because it was to them, and then they came and, and worshiped. So there was a, uh, it was a demarcation or a milestone of the birth of Christ, and because right. heaven is a continuation of life for everybody, is that um, I think because uh, you think of the the big you know the big events of the Christian life, it's the birth of Christ, Christmas, mm-hmm. and then the death of Christ, Easter, and resurrection. Right, uh, and we celebrate every year, um, and and God. Uh, and I think this this is reflected even in Revelation, that um, uh, we are to remember these events, like Passover, for example, and mm-hmm. you know. And he said continually uh, communion, keep doing that as a remembrance, reminder. Uh, and the one thing that always struck me when. Uh, I read in in John 20 when Jesus appears before the disciples, um, you know he had been he had been beaten and wounded and crucified, and uh, when he appeared, he had his complete resurrection body, so everything was healed, so to speak, right? A- except the no the holes in his hands and feet and side, um, mm-hmm. and that that's how we see him. And I think the reason is that. Um, he wants us to remember right. on what basis do we have that relationship of, of his act of coming, you know, coming to earth and that. So I think, I think the answer is, yeah, I think they do. Yeah. I think, I think well, they and celebrate. We see, 
throughout the Bible that God is a God of celebration. And right. like you just said, a God of remembrance. And those, you know, the traditions that the the Israelites had that were commanded by God, they didn't just come up with them on their own. He actually told them to celebrate these certain things and remember these certain things. And so we know that is actually his nature yeah. to remember and to celebrate them too. So yeah. that's an interesting question though. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, uh, it is a, a deeper element of, uh, therefore, because it's eternal and because of the beauty of God is that, uh, we are to we are to include the the real purpose of Christmas in our celebration here. Oh, absolutely! And not just to go through a, a weekend of well, we we open presents and we we even we, even we go to church, but it's all mm -hmm. perfunctory, as opposed to rejoicing because I think heavenly mm -hmm. host and the heavens are rejoicing with us. And uh, so we were talking about probably Michelle's <laughs> having a pretty good Christmas. So uh, I bet it's been kind, of, kind of fun. <laughs> Well, as we, uh, you know, we're talking about the end times and um, we've been, you and I have been talking about the election, uh, which interesting mm -hmm. enough has gone on and on and on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, with the voting, but uh, it's now pretty much settled. Uh, well, but when you air in this, of course, we're taping this, you know, in uh, uh, second week of December. So we're, we're, uh, uh, over that now, but you'll you'll hear this. But they finished the election, and it appears that the Republicans gained the the what they call the control, the majority of the mm -hmm. House of Representatives, and the Democrats uh, have the control of the Senate. Right. Uh, so it's going to be uh, interesting. Uh, what I see as it imp imp uh, has implication for the end times is that uh, from the uh, inability mm -hmm. of the government to really work together. What I see is actually more division and chaos. Mm, um, and that, and even now, both sides, I don't hear anybody saying, well, let's get together and come up with a great new idea to help the country. Rather, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to have investigations <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to come after you. You know, mm -hmm. and because I think it's kill, steal, and destroy is kind of the nature of, of the life right, right now. So um, I think I think it'll it'll create that. And what we remember, we talked about that the when the beast is created with the tribulation, that the one world government is readily accepted by the world, mm -hmm. which means they give up on their own governmental systems. Um, right. And I think I think as we look at it, that worldwide and particularly what we're seeing is that the discouragement of the populace toward their government is is getting stronger and stronger and stronger with a just a view of you can't really you're not really they making good decisions done. and you're not getting anything done mm -hmm. and when the crisis happens which by the way i believe it'll be an economic crisis and we'll talk about that in a second um and then there's a solution provided by a new form of government Mm -hmm. Because I was so discouraged with my current form, I just say, sure, why not? Um, and Almost by the out way, out of resignation, out of this resignation, isn't working anyway. So. And and out of well, hey, you got a solution, and that's great. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, and this includes, and this is something that I've, that I've I've tried to understand even deeper, and I don't quite yet fully get it. But the leaders of the countries willingly support it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have a resistance of, well, we don't want it, but the people do. And then there's a battle over it. No, it, the entire world readily embraces readily it. Embraces yeah. it. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see what the, how that goes. Um, on the economic front, uh, interesting thing uh, just happened. Uh, that is that, um, well, let me, let, me, let me ask you a question and then we can talk about it. But do you... Sure. Do you have, let's say, um, a pretty good idea what cryptocurrency is? You know, I do to a certain extent, but not the, you know, I know the basic, the basics of it, yes. Okay, well, uh, there's two, there's two basic elements to it as we, as we go into the broad, the breadth of, of it becoming uh, worldwide. Uh, one is 
it's an electronic measurement. Mm -hmm. So that um, today, uh, now if you if you think about the way you bank right now, mm -hmm. um, well, you have money in an account. Most of our money is electronic anyway, but we do have different currencies per different countries. Yeah, well, but even even and you think of your bank, and um, and you have let's say you have a thousand dollars in your checking account, mm -hmm. which you you'll see it either in a statement, right, that's sent to you or online where you can see it, right. Okay, now <laughs> does that is that physically? A thousand dollar bills in an account. See, no, no, right. it's it's a number. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's keeping track of transactions that designate that you got income. Dan got income from his company, which is electronic. Mm -hmm. um, that money is deposited into your account, which is electronic. You write checks or or d withdraw money against it, which is electronic. So you know how much is there, right? But it's physically not there now. Um, at the moment, you could convert that mm -hmm. to real uh, dollar bills, right? Or twenty dollar bills, or even even if you wanted to say which which we do when we go to Europe. Well, I'd like to have euros, mm -hmm. so I take my U.S. number and convert it, and they'll get a conversion rate, and I yeah. get I get real euro dollars, uh, physical dollars. Cryptocurrency is um, taking that one step further. So it's all electronic, mm -hmm. but there's never any ability to translate it into anything physical. Right. Uh, so it's, it's strictly a, uh, a numerical value based upon some uh, arbitrary position Mm -hmm. uh, of what that and tracked looks, online basically uh, tracked yeah. online um, and it can gain in value and lose value uh, which by the way is a problem with the uh, the pure cryptocurrency I don't know if you just heard about um, a big exchange mm -hmm. going broke going bankrupt right yeah I think they is it FTX or something FTX. like that that it was the biggest um, fall since en Enron yeah. with the corruption and everything that went on there yeah. it was crazy and the um, uh, billions and billions and billions of dollars were lost by investors. Mm -hmm. um, and it happened, you know, really quick because it was an arbitrary value mm -hmm. that when people invest, you know, let's say they thought it was, I, I invested a uh, U.S. number of, of my dollars into this cryptocurrency. Let's say I put in um, $100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, now I have a value of that cryptocurrency. Uh, so I know X number of units of that cryptocurrency. So I believe, well, that's equal to $100,000. Mm -hmm. Well, when it collapsed, uh, because underneath it all, they were doing shady things, uh, and then it collapsed quickly, my $100,000 became worth nothing. Mm -hmm. And that cryptocurrency value became worth nothing. Right. And but I had my money in that currency. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very unstable, by the way. Well, um, behind this is the central banks. Uh, and the central banks are moving to develop their own cryptocurrency mm -hmm. because they know that these private cryptocurrencies um, are not able to maintain stability uh, and it becomes a very volatile market, and they can't build a system on that heavy volatility. But you got to mm -hmm. have a stability to the currency. So, like the U.S. dollar, by the way, is typically what's used to uh, do transactions. Interesting enough, around the world, and and uh, mm -hmm. even even the oil, what they call petrodollars, is if uh, Europe is buying, uh, let's say, oil from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Well, they pay it through an exchange of U.S. dollars. Right. Because the U.S. dollars have been fairly stable and everything is done through that transaction. Uh, with what they're doing, and this just happened this last week, they tested uh, 
with oil uh, cryptocurrency done by a central bank. Mm. And what they support it with, um, and this is a little bit tricky, uh, they support it with what's called blockchain technology. Okay. Uh, now, right now, that the transfer or the transaction occurs in the value of the um, uh, the underlying currency, like gold mm-hmm. or U.S. dollar or euro, uh, whatever. Uh, blockchain is a system that, because of all the transactions that take place, it recalculates the value instantaneously. And, and because of the magnitude of it, mm-hmm. it becomes stable. Uh, hmm. It's really interesting. Uh, and so they've been working on this blockchain technology to create the cryptocurrency for the central banks. And last week they just tested it. Wow. And uh, ultimately the goal of that would be one world currency. One world, one world currency that all the central banks support. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but they got to be able to do the transactions relative to, so if you go into a restaurant, you know, in Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. well, and they only take cryptocurrency, then that transaction has to be uh, provided by you on some kind of a device, like a credit card would be similar to that. Right. Um, And then they would charge it, that currency, but it has to be, it has to be a transaction that then is validated so it can take money from your account and mm-hmm. give it to the account of the restaurant. And so so just like a credit card or a debit card would right. do. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, you and I have talked about over the last month or two, the mark of the beast, mm-hmm. uh, which allows people to use this cryptocurrency. And so we've taken another step mm-hmm. toward the one world currency, which everybody now understands is going to be electronic and it's going right. to be what they call crypto and it's going to be supported by the uh, blockchain technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's really happening. And the neat, not, so not the neat thing. We're seeing pieces unfold more we're and seeing more. seeing the pieces yeah. unfold. And um, as we get pro- uh, thinking about the end times, these pieces have to be put in place right. and these pieces have to be tested. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's one thing that I, that I try to help people with is that when it happens, mm-hmm. um, we know one thing uh, from Scripture. It's absolute and it happens completely. And there isn't a segment of society or a country or a place in the world that, that opts out, that, that comes, out <laughs> it, it comes out against it. it, it mm-hmm. It's functional. And if you think of trying to put something that massive in place, mm-hmm. it has to be tested along the way. Right. Because they have to know that they know that they and know. And so we're seeing some testing now. Yeah. And if, I, if they can out. pull it yeah. off, they got to know when they pull it off, it's going to work absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we know from scripture that when they do pull it off, it works absolutely. Right. Um, right. So the signs, when Jesus said, watch the signs, well, see what's happening and we've just saw a big piece of it mm-hmm. with the cryptocurrency of a central bank now not not a private exchange because that was basically uh you know kind of but just a a, a system mm-hmm. that was private where you could invest like a stock you know you can invest in a in a stock and you can make money or lose money similar that's how it worked but a central bank cryptocurrency will be the foundation of the economic system Right. And so that, that's so one thing that I'm sure people are, and I know you're planning to get to this some too. One of the th- questions I'm sure is coming up is, you know, as we're watching these things transpire, what do we do with that? Yeah. <laughs> it's And it's so funny, not funny, actually, it was a little sad, but um, I was on Facebook the other day, hadn't chimed in there in a while. And, and I saw, you know, I don't know if you ever go on there, but they'll have sometimes these posts that people will copy and paste and they just kind of go everywhere. And so you see everybody putting them up. Well, it was a great presentation of the gospel, but written into it was this, you know, I don't watch the news or pay attention about this or this or this going on because when all this happens, I'm going to be raptured. So none of this (laughs) applies to me, but I do need to know. And then it goes on to give like the plan of salvation. 
But the number of Christians that I saw reposting this, you know, don't worry when all this happens, I'm out. But the rest of you need to know this is what it was about, you know, and the number of people that are so certainly banking on the fact that they won't be here are kind of discarding this watch the signs and that sort of thing as well. Um, You know, and lots of things that we've talked about, about it not being so absolute. We'd love it to be pre-trib rapture, but it may or may not be. Um, There's plenty of scripture to support both. But all of that to say, any of the listeners that are listening now and they're hearing what you're talking about, the banks and the crypto, and they're starting to wonder, is there something I'm supposed to be doing in response? How do you answer that question for them? Yeah. Um, Well, uh, let's go to a couple, actually go to a couple of places about this. Um, uh, Jesus uh, answers a question about this. So go to Matthew 24 and uh, read verses um, uh, 3 through uh, 14. It says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, Keep going through 14. Keep going. Oh, sorry. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound and love of the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Yeah. Okay. So um, the question, you know, the disciple said is, Hey, when's all this going to happen? Mm hmm. Um, and Jesus says, well, um, I'll give you some signs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there'll be deception, uh, wars and rumors of wars. Uh, uh, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famine, pestilence, earthquakes. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Mm-hmm. Um, so that uh, he says, when you see that accelerate, mm-hmm. that you'll begin to recognize that it's about ready to happen. Right, um, and we can see that acceleration. And we can see that acceleration. And there's actually, you know, even data, there's, you know, far more earthquakes now than there mm-hmm. were, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, there's right, right. Uh, more more wars, you know, than, than ever. Uh, there's um, famine uh, mm-hmm. is big time. Pestilence, which would be like COVID uh, is, you know, is happening. Uh, and then, and then in verse 9, he says, then mm-hmm. they will deliver you up to up to tribulation. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's where the word comes from. Hmm. Is, you know, we call it the tribulation. Right. Well, it's seven years of tribulation. Well, because why? Well, uh, and this is interesting because um, as far as the world's concerned, at the beginning of the tribulation, what we call tribulation, right? What would they call it? They're actually going to think that's resolution, that it's good. Yeah. See, they would think it as uh, a a great solution, right? As opposed to all to a, these problems yeah, that have have predeceased because, it. Yeah. Uh, and this is interesting that their tribulation happened prior to the tribulation. So, so. Mm-hmm. Um, why do they embrace it? Because awful, and, and remember, uh, and this is really true about how most people live around the world, is um, it's really based on economics. Mm-hmm. Is my ability to have income and pay my bills and have mm-hmm. food and, and uh, things. No, and we talked, I think we talked last time that the debt level has skyrocketed. Right. And people are starting to try to make choices between 
uh, you know, do I pay my fuel bill mm -hmm. uh, or not, or do I do I limit uh, how much food I can buy now, etc. Because I'm running out of money uh, right. because of inflation. So. Um, uh, it becomes an economic crisis. So for them, it's great pain. The tribulation for them is a great solution. Mm. Is, hey, we solve this problem for you. And you go from the struggle right. and the pain and the fear and the worry to, no, it's going to be really good now economically. Right. And those first three and a half years will actually feel good to them, correct? Okay. Yes. Um, so the world, and by the way, this is where the Christian... Uh, community is going to have a little bit of a fuzzy time with this mm -hmm. is they'll they'll suffer too mm -hmm. and if you aren't familiar with what God is saying and wanting us to understand we'll see it as a solution too and we will actually and I, and I know this is going to be true people will say this is God's answer and and help help us thank you mm -hmm. so much but um, and this is where by the way we come back to the mark of the beast Right. Is that, no. Don't be fooled. Don't be don't, deceived. Don't be <laughs> deceived and do it. And then he says here that um, in the tribulation, they're going to uh, deliver you, kill you, uh, and you'll be hated for my namesake. And then you'll actually, uh, will offend each other, hate each other. Uh, lawlessness will abound and love of many will grow cold. But they who endure to the end shall be saved. Okay, so um, why would we, if we're a true believer who's not taking the mark of the beast, Mm -hmm. Why would we call it tribulation? Because it's going to be some difficult times. Including uh, persecution. Oh, yeah. And Anna can kill you. Mm -hmm. and they're going to come after him. Many will be killed. Not by, not, not everybody. Uh, but he's going to come after the remnant uh, who are not following. And then we know that, you know, through the Antichrist uh, of, uh, of what he does, that he purposely rises up during the three and a half years Mm -hmm. With a remember, because he's he's, and this is something we got to understand is spiritual, right? Um, who's behind the Antichrist? Satan, right? What is Satan trying to do? Kill, steal, and destroy? Literally, wipe off Christianity from the face of the earth mm -hmm. through eliminating anybody that has the Holy Spirit, so that it's not just because he's a human and doesn't like Christians. It's a spiritual activity of Satan using the Antichrist. Mm -hmm to come after Christians. Uh, and, right. and the reason we call it tribulation, which is why they call it tribulation, it's not it's not for the average person in the world, it's for us. Mm. Why? Because we're gonna go through some really hard, difficult things um, that is is kind of, you know, kind of important to, you know, to understand. Um, so uh, when you look at, um, you know, is, uh, you know, this, this is going to be like, oh, for sure we're raptured. Well, this verse implies no. Right. Uh, you're not at this point uh, raptured. And if you endure, you know, you're, I'm going to save you. Okay, jump over to um, uh, Revelation 13. Okay. Um, and read verses... Um, Uh, one through nine. It says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. 
all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saint. Okay, so uh, again, we've talked about the uh, the originally said the beast, which is the ten, you know, ten uh, uh, horns, mm-hmm. um, is the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satan is preparing it, and then one of them, which is the Antichrist, who becomes synonymous with the beast, right. gets wounded, uh, looks like mortally, and then is res- it seems like he's resurrected. Um, uh, and he says, uh, they worship the beast, mm-hmm. um, they worship the Antichrist. Um, and then in verse 5, what does he do? He's given authority to continue for the 42 months, mm-hmm. and um, he makes war with who the saints mm-hmm. and overcomes them right um and uh he's going to come after us to kill us well mm-hmm. again just look at the simplicity of that is well if this is true well then, then who, we're here for then, some of this <laughs> then, then we have to be here and mm-hmm. uh and that's why we got to be careful that we don't have a as a absolute well it doesn't matter because we're going to be raptured mm-hmm. anyway right um, and i think just going to we'll, we'll talk more about this uh, in the next weeks here but what it means is is preparing uh for a moment where we're not going to join the system mm-hmm. but also preparing our hearts to be able to walk with God, to know how do we respond. I just I just had a conversation last night with a guy that came up. He said, I, and I've read your book on the remnant, and I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, uh, when this all happens, and he's, he said, I, I kind of think that we're not raptured before the tribulation. Right. Uh, he says, what do we do? Should I just march downtown to Denver and just say, go ahead and kill me? Uh, or or what? You know, do I hide? You know, what do I do? I said, well, uh, here's the here's the answer to that question. Ask God. Uh, so I love even as you say that. Can I highlight a verse that we yeah. just read in Matthew twenty four? It says, "But he who endures to the end shall be saved." That word for endures is hupamino which I think is so cool. I mean, it talks about um, holding one's ground in conflict and persevering under pressure and all of that. But if you just look at like, you know, the the teacher and we can't help but do this, look at the two parts of that word, hupo and mino. And mino is to abide, right? And hupo is to come under the authority of. And so truly in its purest sense, but he who comes under the authority of abiding and listening to God in the end will be saved. Yeah. So our solution in that is exactly what you're talking about. That that's the starting point of a it's truly we need to be abiding and asking God what he has to say in each step of this way. And that's the beginning point of this. That's right? right. Yeah. And we're, we'll talk about uh, this idea of preparation and the fullness of that word, which is and I hope Amino is well, let's go abide with the one that knows. And that yes. was my answer to him. And he said, hey, I'd like to talk to you more about this. Is that I said, first of all, we can't develop our own system, but rather it's going to be unique and there's going to be an, a given instruction by God as to what how to walk with him, including if we are going to walk to our death. Mm-hmm. There's something about that that he'll protect us in where I think he'll take away the fear of it and I think he'll take away the pain of it. Um, mm-hmm. And but at the same time, we see that he doesn't protect everybody from that event. Right. Uh, well, we got to know what to do, and some people are are made it through, and other people aren't. So, uh, big big question. So anyway, as we look at this, um, uh, yeah, there's there's a, a big question here of um, what do we what what are we to look at? Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that you're raising up here is kind of important: is be careful that just because somebody else said, don't worry about it, we'll be raptured. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, uh, it's possible. And 
my viewpoint is and preferable, right? <laughs> I I would join that absolutely. Let's go, you know. But I also know scripture, and it's like, well, be careful that you don't build mm-hmm. your home theology around it because then I don't pay attention to the signs. So what difference does it make? Right. And I don't prepare, and I don't get my heart ready. And what we're saying is, no, you got to spend the energy right now. Things mm-hmm. are moving so fast. At least we can we could observe Mm -hmm. and here's the question you know now that we see these things could we say this is now possible in how we can interpret it and the answer is yes some of the questions that other people were like i wonder i wonder about interesting enough we don't have to wonder about it Mm -hmm. like cryptocurrency yeah, we, how is we that, can see how these things would come into play. How now. are you going to have a one world currency? Uh, well, how about this that just got tested this mm-hmm. week? Huh. Right. Interesting. All right. Well, we got to go. We got, we're <laughs> we're uh, running a little bit late here, but. Uh, uh, Interesting. Uh, we have lots to, lots to cover. Stay with us each week. Uh, we're going to get more into this. And we're going to answer this question about uh, preparation. And uh, mm-hmm. what does God Excellent. say about that? And there's lots of elements to it because we we tend to think of preparation is materially, yes, but it's way 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 bigger than that. So we'll we'll talk about that. Absolutely. So we'll we'll catch up with you Excellent. next time. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for your insight and for uh, going on that rabbit trail with me. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, good stuff, though. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone, and have a merry merry Christmas. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. celebrating. <laughs> And just the anticipation, imagine the anticipation that they must have felt so many years ago, knowing the Messiah was coming. And we can can, uh, pretty safely say, probably the tribulation isn't going to start this weekend. So enjoy Christmas. (laughs) So enjoy Christmas. (laughs) Enjoy Christmas. Yeah. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. right, Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.